Hi, hope you're well. I'll be talking about salt today. So salt is one of those topics that is beneficial for all of us because it has been showing that reducing salt intake can affect various aspects of our health, such as modern, lowering our blood pressure levels. And also it can also help us even to get more benefits from the food that we eat, aka tasting the food that we eat rather than just tasting salt. So the recommendations for salt is to include five milligrams of salt per day, which is just a teaspoon. And most people do include up to five to 10 milligrams or even 15 milligrams. And the reason for this is because of the processed foods where there is a lot of salt. So a lot of salt is hidden within processed foods, foods that are fermented, foods that are cured with salt, foods that just have salt added to them to improve the flavor. One thing I'll be advising is that we make it a habit of reading food labels. Foods that come with labels, just turn the back of that food product and read the label. If you tot up all the salt products you buy, you'll be surprised of how much salt you'd be including in the day in your meals. So it's worth adding that up and checking your food labels. Second thing I'd advise is to ensure that you do not include salt at the table. So when you cook a meal, that's it. You're not adding any extra salt at the table because you're going to be adding to the salt that was used in cooking because it's hard to get away from adding salt to our meals. Thirdly is to grow your own herbs. So herbs is a great way to add flavor. There's a myriad of higher herbs out there. There's thyme, rosemary, scent leaf, curry leaves, basil, parsley, coriander. Although sometimes we're set with the types of herbs we use because obviously culinary, culinary skills are passed down from um, generation to generation and we learn to cook a certain way using certain herbs. But we can branch out a bit and begin to experiment and you'd be surprised to see that some of the flavors actually do make sense. Some of the herbs do match up with other foods that you may have not thought for about initially. So go for it. Plant your own. You can grow your own herbs. It's so easy to do in little pots and there's so much information about how to do that online. But if you don't have the space for it, you can buy your herbs. Fourthly, what I'd advise is to include spices. So spices are known for their flavor, their color, and also for their health benefits. Things like paprika, um, cumin, coriander, such spices like that you can include to your dishes. Also, what you can do is to look at your own local spices that you can add to your dishes because they really bring out the flavor of your native dishes. So I'm Nigerian, so things like ogiri, oda, and chow will bring out the flavor of your food so you don't need to add so much salt, which is what we're trying to avoid. Another thing you can do is to make your own seasoning. I saw a video recently of seasoning being made from scratch. I've not seen that before and I was really in engrossed in that video. I found it really interesting and an exciting phenomenon that you could actually make your own chicken seasoning. But the downside of that video was that the, all the vegetables that they use, by the time they went through the various heat processes, would have lost most of their vitamin and mineral content. However, that shouldn't put you off because you can actually manage measure out the amount of salt you want to include in your seasoning because all stocks and cubes that you buy in the shops contain salt and a lot of salt so you can reduce that amount and thereby you're reducing the amount of salt you're eating generally so let me know what topic you'd like me to discuss next time and i'll see you in the next video don't forget to subscribe ciao